So Dan, um, you're a wizard of sacred geometry. What practical advice can you give for maybe DIY builders to incorporate sacred geometry in their homes? Well, you know, our essential message has always been simple. The only meaning for the term sacred here is the fact that the right shape creates an implosion of charge, which creates life and centripetal force and gravity and all the good stuff. So all the different names we have for it, whether it's feng shui or biogeometry, none of these words mean anything except implosive charge. Beyond that, there is no meaning. There is none. And But when charge does implode, you get an entropy in life. So d- differences in language are not important. The pure principle is important. And the pure principle means, you know, first is the required material, which has to be high dielectric, so that the capacitance isn't destroyed, which means steel and aluminum is going to mess it up. It's pretty simple. And that's why living materials are essential, because of the dielectric constant. It's charge permissive, charge permissive distribution, and et cetera, et cetera. So the principle here is quite simple. If you use natural material, that's number one. And number two, then, would be a geometry that creates implosive charge. And the implosive charge, it's not complicated. It's measurable. If the, the frequency signature of the weak capacitive field indicates implosive, implosion, then you've succeeded. And it, we've proven it because that's what makes the seed grow. <laughs> so it's so, pretty simple. So, the, so, so there are devices that I can actually can uh, test for this. Well, you know, we started um, bioarchitects.net with our biologic architecture curriculum. The centerpiece for that was there is a way to decide what architect gets a paycheck by measuring whether his building will cause a seed or a child to grow. And that's the flameinmind.com slash life force as featured at bioarchitects.net and goldenmean.info slash architecture. That's the point that the weak capacitive field, the low frequency infrasound weak capacitive harmonics of a building, the same as a tree, indicate whether it's alive or dead. Because the the Schumann harmonics, which are just a name for implosion harmonics, will tell you if it's centripetal or not. That's life or death. So Dan, in layman's terms, when I, um, in my, you know, back in the days, sometimes I would wear not a cotton shirt, but I'd wear like a synthetic shirt. You actually feel ugly in it. You feel like... (laughs) You almost have this vomiting feeling that happens from the center of your chest and you feel like you are squashed. Not squashed, it's, it's, I, I can't explain it. What, what, is that a good example to just in layman's it's terms? A, it's a very excellent example. It's important to connect the physics to the experience. So the reason a polyester shirt makes you feel literally sick is because your body has to implode charge or you're gonna die. If you want to live without food, for example, you have to live, have living charge surrounding you. And the dielectric constant of most synthetic material, polyester, for example, literally is a barrier to the implosion of charge. That's why your rubber sneakers eventually might kill you because you're not going to be able to get access to the charge of the earth grounding. So it everything has everything to do with how a capacitor works. If you don't know how a capacitor works, you cannot know how life or architecture works. Okay, that's very important. So, um, so that means that that's why they're having all these copper plates that you put your feet on to get that grounding um, energy. Because we're all wearing rubber. Uh, you know, most of us are wearing you know some form of yeah, the, the rubber itself. I mean, there's even natural rubbers is not such a bad thing. The problem is if it's it's a very thick rubber that's isolating you more and more from access to the Schumann harmonics of the Earth. So the book Earthing is very instructive. It's very correct. I always tell a famous story. You know, I took my shoes off once in the BO co-op and my sweaty feet touched the floor. And at that instant, people in front of me and behind me decided they wanted to initiate a conversation with me. The reason was simple. When you get grounded, you get centripetal. And that is literally attractive. <laughs> okay, okay. So I, because I've moved to a flat now, um, because the place where we're renting next to our land is no longer uh, available. And in this flat, I'm on the second story and I think it's all ferro-cement in the walls. These are special panels. Um, so the ferro-cement is going, because it's a block of flats. So there's, uh, you know, panels of ferro-cement, one, two, three, four, probably 50 of them left and 50 of them right. So, <clears throat> 
it's possible that's also feeling that uh, sick feeling because it's like we like this grid is doing something to me what could it be what? doing well the cement itself the calcium the limestone cement itself has a wonderful capacitance for life force even the second gertianum that they made of cement what kills you and i mean literally kills you is the steel rebar the metal rebar in that cement that's why Anytime you walk with bare feet on cement, generally, you immediately feel your aura just got drained. It's very simple. It's the steel in that cement that stole your capacitance. So now, but actually plastic, carbon fiber, and other kinds of rebar, bamboo, meets code in many countries. So it is possible to make cement that won't kill you. A good example is uh, my friends in Italy, Claudio Cudai in Torino, you know, they built their new center out of cement and they went to the local architect and the architect said, well, we can legally make this building of everything above ground with, uh, you know, carbon fiber and uh, other rebar, non-metallic, but the basement legally, we have to put steel in it. Well, they built that building. It was gorgeous. And in the upper floors, your aura feels, you know, you can feel it breathe. And we had lots of blisters, but in that basement, you go down there and you can immediately feel your aura goes, oh shit. <laughs> Okay, okay. So, and um, I hear you. So that's good that there are alternatives. Um, oh, yeah, uh, sure. And um, the, the role of shapes, obviously, you've answered that already. But um, like, I know that we can create an interesting charge, for example, some vegetables go really well in pyramids, so we could create a similar charge in the dome. The, what is your opinion on various shapes like a pyramid? a square and a circle or a six uh, pointed hexag hexagon and eight pointed. Could you maybe run through some of these numbers and see uh, well, what, what information? Generally, pure, yeah, generally pure tetracubic geometry is the opposite of implosive. So that isn't generally going to be centripetal and therefore not alive. Uh, generally spheres, spherical structure, mother nature will never use. And my friends, always go nuts inside spherical structures. Bucky's spherical domes were death to life force, actually. Uh, so that's not good. Uh, and So making a whole home like a, like a dome and all putting all rooms in the dome is a bad idea. Well, a sphere is a bad idea. An egg shape can be very useful, but a sphere will drive you insane, I promise you. Uh, and because it's, it's monoharmonic, basically. Harmonic inclusiveness is life. Harmonic exclusiveness is death. And a sphere is the opposite of harmonic exclusive. That's how you measure when a cell has cancer, when it turned into a sphere. <laughs> Anywho. What do you mean by, excuse me, what do you mean by monoharmonic? Sing, well, sing my, harmony. But the frequency signature of a sphere is one frequency, and that is fatal to life, period. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, the, the other thing about geometries, you know, that Valery Uberoff in Russia, he's making these pyramids then Karatkov comes in and makes a guy a documentary and measures that people's aura is being destroyed. <laughs> and he's filling his pyramids with steel. So all of the structures are steel uh, rebar and they're deathly. So it's more important to use the right material. And then after you get that right, well, then you can play with the shape. The shape is simple. The, the, the reason sacred length is called sacred is because certain lengths will divide evenly into into Planck and and Planck will allow you to just could you could you move those please sorry about that apologies so good um so the British foot for example happens to be an integer exponent of golden ratio times Planck that's why the, the foot could be sacred and the meter is not and so John Michel wrote a whole book to say why the meter is not sacred, but he missed the point. <laughs> if it divides evenly in Planck and golden ratio, then it can implode. Because when it implodes through Planck, accurately tuned by golden ratio, then the charge goes through the speed of light into longitudinal, which is how you create life and gravity, basically. So if you don't tune the thing by golden ratio to Planck, it ain't gonna implode. And that's the only definition of sacred length, by the way, and sacred frequency. So basically, if we have used that information that you have just provided us and uh, design our uh, length to width ratios, um, uh, placement of windows, size of the windows, 
uh, distance of the window, for example, that a window can divide a wall one to one point six one eight, then we're game. We're we're on it. Then well, you know that would be a general rule. Actually, however, <laughs> the the real practice is to measure the result in the capacitance. Uh, you know, it's nice to put golden ratio everywhere, but that's only an introduction to the physics. The physics is if the actual structure will musically implode. So the, the only real way to find out is measure it. You just measure um, the low frequencies of the capacitive field, you know. And so the, the, there is a device that you can recommend that that's not expensive. That, uh, I've been, like, been doing that for five years. Your flameinmind.com. It's, you know, life force measure. It's one excellent way. We've done it all over the world. It works. You can tell what building will cause a child or a seed to grow by spectrum analyzing the weak capacitance. Exactly with, exactly the same way you can measure the low frequency harmonics to determine what tree is going to live or die. So Dan, does that mean that I can make a model of a home, one to 10 scale, of the same materials that the final building will be built? And theoretically, testing that will be a replica of what the final building will be. Consider <laughs> it's placed at the right position on the land, like well, not putting it on a car, actually, apartment or carrying what, the Scalability is well defined here. <laughs> scalability for life force equals Golan ratio exponent to Planck. So you take your building, scale it to Planck, and then if you want to make a scale model, you, you divide by Golan ratio exponent to Planck. That's scalability defined. In fact, it's the only definition of true scale invariance because it's 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 implosive permission. So it, one to ten, for example, wouldn't be quite so good. <laughs> got it, got it. So, for, but the question was that uh, will the model have the same frequency as the final building? <laughs> you know, dividing by ten is not going to be very useful. Uh, dividing by golden ratio exponents might be useful, but there's many other issues. <laughs> like uh, such as the placement of the home where it's going to go how uh, it's embedded yeah exactly exactly but yeah so ideally, it, ideally you should have a model on the same place building it on the land well yeah i mean you know at bioarchitects.net some of the best people in the world at that you know old old rich in in prague uh is wonderful there and our tour was great i mean we have people that have been doing this for many years and they're very good at it but it basically, you douse the, the site, make a magnetic map, and you need a magnetic cross point for the center point of where you're going to have, design your sacred space, the same way you'd site a labyrinth or a cathedral. And then you, you know, there's an elaborate procedure to create a basement without metal. <laughs> and then you can, even low temperature fired bricks have better capacitance than high temperature. We know why. There's a lot to why? it. Why? Because I'm because pretty low temperature fired bricks will um the uh fractality of the molecular array is not as melted as the high temperature fired brick so low temperature fired brick will have more of the fractality of the ambience of where the clay came, came from for example there's a whole section of that on oldrich's uh Hosman site in in Prague but basically you know and you wouldn't use low temperature fired brick for critical structural places but for most brick, low temperature fired actually will. And you'll feel it. There's a huge difference in the sacred space you create. Yeah, I'm very interested in the bricks because so the book is uh, very exciting. Gustavina vaulting 100 years ago was making a million bricks per year. And a thin tile vault, a thin, thin tile vault um, in three layers. And yes. he was making magic with, with, with these bricks. So. I want to bring this technology back. Um, and uh, yeah, it was building in America quite a lot. So it came from Ka 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 Catalan, Catalan, one of the Catalan architects studied in the same school as Gaudi. Um, so uh, yeah, basically that's the technology. Three layered tiled bricks. Um, right. The strength okay. is phenomenal. They have, a, I think, a train going over one of these poles um, and it's very strong. The, the dielectric constant of the chosen material and three layers can produce a very beautiful implosive sandwich. Uh, but what would make it rich if the trace mineral, uh, which is basically more harmonic rich, the better, the more diversity, the better. But if the trace mineral is high dielectric, you'll produce, for example, barium-stranium titanate or one of these 
high dielectric materials will make it more implosive and therefore more magic for sacred space. Okay, so bringing it back to natural builders, how do we check that the material that we're making clay from is high dielectric? Again, that website you recommended. Well, measuring dielectric constant is, uh, you know, is 101 for electrical engineers. <laughs> I can give you the formula if you like. <laughs> you, you, you measure the capacitance and then you take a formula for the thickness and the area of the capacitor and it measures the quality of the dielectric, which is the insulator between the plates of a capacitor. And barium shinium titanate, super dielectric, key to phase conjugate mirrors is also key to spiritual auras. Super dielectrics, that's what it's all about. Look it up. <laughs> okay, okay, got it. And um, Dan, any information on the uh, Feng Shui? Like how can, uh, so because they're not talking about just materials, they're talking about placing of the home, you know, having the window there on the east, I believe, and then, you know, and the way you position the landscape. How can that all affect our homes? Remember, Feng Shui was just an introduction to the physics. For example, placement of the looking out toward east is useful in many environments because a sailor must look into the wind to steer. However, if your house is on the side of the mountain, your plasma is coming down that mountain, and you don't always want to be looking east. So there's many other variables, but the, qu the question is, you must be facing the plasma wind if you wish to steer. That's the physics of why your bed should be facing a certain direction, usually east or north, but not always. Okay, and what do you mean by the plasma coming down the mountain, if you're next to the mountain? Is that the energetical flow of the... The flow of charge, which is the wind of charge, which is the actual meaning of the term feng shui. <laughs> so the wind of charge, you know, if you're a sailor and you don't face the wind, you're doomed. <laughs> well, you need to steer. So on, on, certain, on a mountainside, for example, the direction from which most of the charge is coming is not always east. <laughs> Often it is, but if, if you're on the side of a mountain, it depends on where the, where the mountain is, because that will be the source of your charge. And uh, any uh, words on biogeometry? Because Ibrahim Karim has done some great work. I've even studied uh, uh, under one of his uh, uh, lecturers. Yeah, uh, yeah, Ibrahim is a screen. Uh, he's right. He's he's made geometry that creates seed growth. It's very useful. But it would be helpful if he knew what a capacitor was. <laughs> Reich had the same problem. Didn't know what a capacitor was. <laughs> even Steiner, he called it etheric formative force. It's basically capacitance. So everybody inventing their own name sometimes just ain't helpful. So calling it biogeometry, we didn't need another name for a capacitor. We needed people who know what capacitors are. Okay, okay. So I'm going to research capacitors at the <laughs> website you recommended. <laughs> I had a lovely fight with him. You know, I said, well, you know, he says negative green will, will kill you. And he says, I can kill you with it. Therefore, I know what it is. I says, no, you might be able to shoot a gun. That doesn't mean you know how it works. He doesn't know why negative green will kill you. It's the opposite to a positive capacitance. He still doesn't know. Okay, so the thing that the true master combines all the wisdom together and actually- In one subject called physics. Okay, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I use the laws of physics in designing of my home. <laughs> but uh, now you're talking, touching on the laws of chemistry as well. So it's not just- Well, phys chemistry is a branch of physics. So. <laughs> it's all about imploding charge, actually. And, you know, the fact that Wilhelm Reich called it orgone and, and James de Mayo refused to believe that it had anything to do with the capacitor was, well, in fact, it has nothing to do with anything else. <laughs> So inventing Not new so. names every day for charge implosion is not usually helpful. And then another question, what if we create a blobular organic structures that are not really domes or any, it's like a, a liquid frozen, you know? Um, and there is a way to do that with the software these days called parametric, parametric design. I'm sure you've seen some of the stuff Zaha Hadid is doing. And I'm not talking about on that grand and sane scale. I'm talking about really a small home for family. The, the physics is called structural stability and morphogenesis. That membrane health always determined is always determined by harmonic inclusiveness. So actually, if you take the frequency signature of any membrane geometry and check the musical cascade generated, you can see whether it's alive or dead. So structural stability and morphogenesis, Rene Tome, laws of form, that was an introduction to how a membrane shape creates life or death. 
And if you have some clue of what that means electrically, then you can start to think about what amorphous shapes could do, or you could measure the resulting capacitance. Then you'd know if you created life or death. So a good example would be a well-designed church by the ancient architect placed on that magnetic crossing, like you stated. You'd walk into that church, especially like um, old Russian churches, uh, and I'm sure you have in France some uh, examples. You feel really, really good. You just feel well in them. Is that what you're talking about? Well, yeah, that's you can't explain it. That's advanced geobiology, but actually you need to explain it desperately. And you know, when we found out that the cheapest way for a farmer to sue the power company to prove that their power pole destroyed his farm by measuring soil compaction, which is proof the death of the soil microbes, you can sue and force that power line to be removed from your farm because it's a cheap measurement to make. Well, all of that physics works just great to sue the Catholic church to remove the sharp steeple. <laughs> Ain't it great? The sharp where, steeple. Yeah, it has the same physics of bleeding capacitance. Where the onion-shaped steeple. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, the onion shapes are coming there. Uh, I, well, can... I'm glad you mentioned Russian. <laughs> yes. 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 The zones. You're talking about the zones. Well, the the onion the ch the Russian churches. The top is shaped like a dome. And that that's more implosive. Now, there are certain situations where a sharp point might be helpful, but only if it feeds that bleeding capacitance into an array. So actually, in general, a sharp steeple is a geopathic structure. Hello, Catholic Church. I think, folk, I think what Dan is trying to say is uh, uh, research this, the, the subject before you start sticking things on and onto your homes. Um, well, you know, a, a needle is used in acupuncture where you specifically must bleed charge. <laughs> but in general, a sharp steeple, hint Catholic Church, will cause the soil to die. So Dan, have you been recently to a, a, a structure that has that um, implosive charge that you, uh, you know, how can that benefit us besides just the health? Could a person be more inspired, more connected to uh, universe um how does one feel inside this well you know when karatka karatka followed the kogi to where they make ancestor phone calls and measure the fractality of the air <laughs> that was an introduction to the only definition of sacred space and that's advanced geobiology and that can be designed in most buildings that really work are woven like embedded tapestry into the hartman curry payray lines and the grid and that embeddability produces a building that's charged, dense, and implosive, and literally part of the geomagnetic plasma array of the locale. And that truly will feel like a dreamline song, <laughs> dreaming track song line. So, on your website, do you have like a list of guides that one should follow, like for creating this type of bioarchitecture? I know you've mentioned all of this, but like a pointer down. Check this, number one, check that, number two, like a, like a list of all things need to be. There was, there's a fairly good sequence like that at goldenmean.info slash architecture and a related set of suggestions and experts at goldenmean.info slash geobiology. You know, this is an advanced field. Our friend Stefan Cardino might be the most advanced in the world on that. And now his partner famous here in France, Jan Lipnick. And that's all at goldenmean.info slash geobiology. But these people are advanced enough that they don't need to douse Hartman Curry payray lines. They can see them clairvoyantly. Wow. And they've they've documented the frequency signature of those lines. For example, why a gold payray line, most deflected by gold, will often save a beehive. What um, information or what can you share about, about William Reich's work and those cloud busters and uh, the, the, those copper tubes of organic and inorganic matter placed together? Could it be used successfully within our homes? Um, I used to draw cloud busters as coming out of the homes, but maybe I was just going a bit too far with inspiration. Well, columnating capacitance can make a centripetal field, which is the cause of why water vapor would form a droplet. That's called Christos, actually. And so, of course, alternating high and low dielectrics in a concavity, which Reich called orgain, orgone, which is the wrong word, it should be called implosive capacitance, uh, will create life force. 
and under the right circumstances can create rain. Uh, you know, I would call these orgone accumulators now these these uh, love bomb cloud busters, people they use just to resin with aluminum foil in them. They, they will fractionate capacitance so that they'll break up some geopathic, but they will never assemble any life force. Because of the materials uh, that are well, used. Well, in, in other words, these, these um, orgone uh, devices, it's just, it's just a clear resin and you see all these metal flakes in them. Yeah. Okay, now those devices can somewhat break up a geopathic zone, but they will never ever help you assemble something useful electrically. So we want to have our bioarchitecture assemble something. Uh, well, that's right. Well, and the orgone concept was useful. That was true. They used organic and inorganic layering. The correct term for that is alternate high and low dielectric. That would be the term a physicist would use. But Reich didn't know what a capacitor was. so. <laughs> and, and, and that's why he, he invented his own language, eventually put him in a corner and no one could communicate. And that's actually a lesson for the biogeometry people, the orgone people, you know, after a while, inventing your own language don't help. You got to use a common language and that's called physics. <laughs> yes, I hear you loud and clear, Dan. So then um, any comments on Victor Schauber, though, because uh, also great inspiration came from him and a lot of interesting devices. And um, even I using some of his methods in the designing of our, of our bio architecture, what, what, what can you share with us from what you, you feel about Victor Schauberger's knowledge? Schauberger was fabulous, the intuitive. He was excellent, and he did so many magic, wonderful things. We just had fun with Jorn Schauberger. I think he was grandson up at the Amsterdam conference. And uh, he, I mean, he had it absolutely right. He knew how to make a water vortex, make a spark. The key was that vor water vortex was piezoelectric. And actually what that implosion does at the moment, it spontaneously starts getting colder. It not only generates voltage from gravity, it was such a good generator, Hitler wrote a check, but it will make gravity. And the physics of why is the same for the power source and the gravity source is because when the charge implodes accurately tuned through the speed of light embedded by conjugation accurately at the Planck threshold, it spits out the longitudinal EMF coherence which is the name for what is a gravity wave and the only way to make life force and the only way to make anything centripetal. So, wow, <laughs> that was incredible. And um, the question I have, uh, some knowledge of Victor Schauberger has been lost um, through his sketches, where there are some of his sketches and not everything is transferred into the books. Um, is there any anything that you say that you could recommend that's possibly missing or where some inventors can dig towards? Well, you know, Schauberger contributed to the technology that became the Mercury Vortex and Nazi Bell. In both cases, the vortex was making not just power, but gravity because of tuned charge implosion producing a longitudinal plasma projection. So that is the physics. You tune by golden ratio X1 to Planck and that vortex in Schauberg's case, it was piezo. In the mercury case, it's a iron powder dope red mercury. And in both cases- What do you cases, mean by piezo? Sorry, uh, I don't know what that means. The water vortex will never make power from gravity or make life force unless it's piezo. So in, in, in the biodynamic, they use a rock powder, a piezo rock powder like quartz space. And Schauberg had to do the same thing. It's the same physics of biodynamics, dynamization. So making that water piezo, piezoelectric, is the only reason that water vortex will become charge implosive and therefore alive. And that, by the way, is the key to the imploder.com as well. Yes, yes. And what happens if we layer a few of these key methodologies to create a, a, a temple home that we feel like at least maybe a space within a home that, uh, you know, what can we expect uh, by layering a few of these methodologies, uh, getting the right materials, getting the right positioning on the earth, maybe having a water spiral of Schauberger, um, creating a charge? What if you layer a few of this? Will they amplify the strength well, of the charge? You know, that's, what, that's what the famous book Temple in Man, uh, Robert Lawler, it was about that the archetypal design of temple is a capacitor that actually is a living plasma body. Uh, one, one little story, my 
my partner who introduced me to Bucky Fuller, Gus Chikachi, he built his house in the geometry of one rung of the ladder of DNA, pent hex, golden ratio, rectangle, pent hex. It's one ladder rung of DNA. And in that house shaped like one rung of the ladder of DNA, in the pent, there were no secrets possible. In the hex, privacy was possible. <laughs> you see the difference? <laughs> okay. Okay, so basically what you're saying is it's also uh, choosing the right shape for our rooms, a room well, for creativity, a room for the office work, a room for a bedroom, uh, maybe a, a half a sphere would be good for something, but definitely maybe not good for like a working space. I don't know, what, what could you recommend? Well, it starts very simply. Tetracubic hex, powers of two shapes, uh, tend to create st charge stasis which is perfect where you need to be like a snowflake and uh, where you want to create separate separateness of charge. Uh, secrets, for example, where the pent is the opposite. It is pure implosion and secrets are physically not possible. So that's where you want to have your perfectly shareable wave. So you know what part of your house wants to be part pent and what parts wants to be hex. That's in the beginning. And that's the difference between tetracubic versus. So that gives you a clue. You can begin to think about shape in terms of what the actual physics is so a working space so uh, what would you recommend for a good shape for that well you know egg shape is good for most anything uh if your work has to do with something very shareable and getting it out there and making a shareable wave and promotion and distribution well then pent is very good if your work has to do with quietness stability secrets privacy things like that then a hex is it's exactly what a witch Sorry. did with hexes versus pence. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that, Dan. And uh, do you have any courses coming up that you want to share with uh, um, with the folk that's going to watch this? Uh, we, uh, we're in the process of reinventing fractalu.com. There's a whole new series, Tufan and myself. And um, so we're, you know, we're cooking a, a new series on that. It's a, a, oh, and Patrick, because we're a biofeedback community. So we hope to relaunch that series. In the meantime, uh, you know, the YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Dan Winter Fractal Field is now approaching 300 films and 2 million views. And, we, you know, that it's really cooking there. We have a lot of material. Okay. Awesome. And from our side, we'll be uh, using what Dan would to share with us. Uh, and we will be, we basically have a drawing course right now that um, I've put together that teaches folk how to draw your own home that you can build yourself um, and, um, and afford to build. Because a lot of homes are very expensive and out of pocket, out of budget for most folk out there. So <clears throat> we teach how to design a home using natural materials, uh, using methodologies uh, that we spoke of today. And, uh, yeah, uh, please join us, uh, www.bioveda.co forward slash 3D. BioVeda, is it bio dash? Bio dash? Bio, bio Veda, just one word, B I O V E D A dot C O yes, forward okay. slash uh, 3D. 3D. And I want to say that, you know, my mother was an artist and I've always admired those who can actually draw the organic. I did a lot of sacred geometry modeling by equation, but actually that talent to draw. And I would even set a challenge there that if you can lucid dream what you have or about to draw, uh, we now know the physics of what causes a lucid dream to come lucid. <laughs> The, the actual creation of the drawing, if it's a climax of a lucid dream, we've, we've actually measured how lucid dreaming becomes stargates and real. So literally how dreams become real, which is what drawing introduces you to, is the same as the physics of lucid dreaming, which is basically when your aura gets centripetal. You measure the brain waves, there's lots of ways to measure it, do it with the breath. But so centripetal aura indicates when your lucid dreams become portals, literally when your dreams become real. And that's what, that's what, sets the charge imploding through the vehicle of your drawing. And talking about portals, talking about portals, could we create a portal by getting the, uh, some of the methodology that we spoke of uh, right? Well, that's what we showed. For example, therify.net repeatedly triggers lucid dreaming and we know exactly why, because it makes the aura more centripetal. And that gives inertia to what is passing through Planck out 
into a longitudinal array called the Dreaming Track Songline. And so your ability to be embed in that larger array depends on the emission of longitudinal coherence out the center of the body, which is where it became dense and imploded. And that inhabiting that array is the physics of lucid dreaming. And obviously the difference between a lucid dream trigger and a portal is simply the amount of charge density. And we've actually proved that now our latest film with Jean-Charles Moyen, who repeatedly his lucid dreams get so lucid, he comes back with sand between his toes. And now we know why, and we've measured it. Wow. Our latest film just went viral. Check out our YouTube channel. <laughs> Okay, or what is it called? The, the, not the, chan the channel I got, but the film. Yeah, well, it's the second last film at Dan Winter Fractal Field U YouTube channel, which is Jean-Charles Jean Morien, the French secret space program survivor, who's quite famous. He's a filmmaker. And what he's famous for is the fact that many, many have witnessed his lucid dreams became so real that he came back with material, sand and water. When he came back from his dreams, witnesses saw that he brought back material from where he went many times. And the physics of how that happens is the brainwave and breath become so implosive, coherent, the centripetal force in the aura is goes over the threshold from a lucid dream into a Stargate portal. And we've explained the physics and measured it. So could we get some of that into the home temples that were built? Do you believe yeah. that? Use the same frequency signature, flameinmind.com. <laughs> Pure oh. implosion.